Guys, before we get into the show this week, the cord caps are back on sale. You can see Gabe and I sporting right now. Uh, it's the last time you're ever going to be able to get your mitts on one of these, the Daily Blue News Blue and White Cord. They are back. They are on sale right now, and they're probably going to sell out. They sold out last time. We ordered more. They're, they're going like hotcakes. A pa- good few have already gone. Patreon, Patreon got, got a crack at them. Look. Patreon got a crack. They had a good... Good lash, Adam. Thank you, guys. And now they're on sale to you guys, and they're going. They're going. They're going. They're not quite gone, but they probably will be after this podcast. Nice details on the inside. Consistent mediocre news uh, embroidered on the back. Daily blue news embroidered on the front. Yes, that's it. They're on sale. Go and grab one. We love you. We love your support. And that's a way you can support the show by actually getting something too. Not just, you know, us taking. We're giving. Plus you look sick. Yeah, plus you look fucking cool. I mean, that's that's a gift in itself. Welcome back to another classic episode of the Daily Blue Weekly Podcast. My name's Bluey. And my name is Gabe. And this is your weekly dose of all the news stories that matter, but it's mostly the ones that don't. What is happening mate it is thursday we're recording this a bit later than we would normally like to yep uh i've got new pants on i don't know if you noticed i I did think that that's not your usual uh style and or color so as i was saying i did a bit of shopping i did a bit of eofy girls day bro and i was like (laughs) so excited when these rocked up so i bought like seven pairs in multiple colors they're normally a hundred dollars online shop bro so these are these are these pants that I always wear for work, and they're a hundred bucks a pop, yeah. which is like you can spend more on work pants, but it's not it's not cheap. And uh, they they went I don't know what I don't know if it was a malfunction on the uh, RSCA safety website thirty three dollars. Bang, eat that up. So I was like, well, I'm getting fucking heaps of them. So I bought like yeah. seven pairs. I rang Jeff. I was like, do you need work pants? I'm just work panting up, just bulk order. Then they rocked up. We call these ones the PMs, the project managers, because mm-hmm. they're like the they're like chinos that all mm-hmm. the project managers wear. You need like. Two shades lighter and they're proper PMs. Yeah, there. yeah. But these are just PM as I'll ever get. So yeah. they, this is the first time I ran them today. Obviously, destroyed them. There's blood and semen all over them. That's how hard <laughs> what do you I do work. for work again? Yeah, just, I work hard. Man. <laughs> yeah. Put my fucking body into those jobs. So yeah, got the PMs <laughs> on. I took them for a spin today. I liked it. I was feeling myself. Yeah, they're holding up. Yeah. Do, do you need to wear work pants in? What's your thoughts on that? No, nah, I like them. These are good. These are fresh. But it is – like I've got a pair that I've been flogging for like 18 months now mm. and they feel and look different. They've had – there's a bit There's a bit in them. They've so been traumatised. Do you prefer the freshies or do you prefer the ones that have a bit of character on them and uh, you've worn them in? They're moulded to your body. I don't know. I do, I do enjoy the feeling of putting new – pants on yeah new pants my legs like it i only got one pair of work pants hey eh? to be fair any, putting on anything that covers up my fucking horrific pale freckly ginger fucking legs i'm all for i got a <laughs> mate and he refuses to put pants on like he only wears shorts oh well, I was yeah. gonna like, as i was saying that i'm like i've misled everyone here yeah uh, he's gonna have to put pants on at some stage it's gonna be a problem at yeah. nan's funeral he's like, like <laughs> fucking please <laughs> Please can't. She's yeah. dead. <laughs> it's what she would have wanted. She'd know it's who I am. Yeah. Uh, won't wear long pants. Only wears shorts. Clearly he's never like grew up in fucking Tamworth or Canberra or, you know what I mean, lived here his whole life. Because if you grow up in a joint like that, you're putting long fucking pants Proper on. Proper coasty. There's a, I work, I have worked, not he works for another scaffolding company, but there's a man that is literally the exact opposite and only wears jeans. I Even if it's like it. 40 degrees, he's like just repping this one. I think he's just got one pair of jeans that he works in. I don't know. I've, it's it's bizarre. I've been with him on like scorching hot days and he's just repping these fucking heavy Levi's. I'm and, like, and brother. Not even, not even like complaining no, either, eh? just fucking going about his business. I'm like, brother, are you like, what's I reckon doing? that's insecurity about the legs. He's a grown man. Yeah. Hey, grown men can be insecure. This bloke doesn't look like he cares about much, eh? Well, it's just the legs. That's his one thing. That's his kryptonite. He maybe know. he's got some girly little pins under there. Yeah, but I got, aw- got awful legs, bro. Like, fuck, summertime, I've, I've got awful, awful legs. And you'll get them out? Yeah. Yeah, mate, that's just the confidence. He, he doesn't have that. Oh, no. No, it's not confidence. I'm just like, I'd rather be fucking laughed at than be hot and uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm willing to be mocked. Um, yeah, so that's good. Anyway, i got new pants. It's fun. Fucking it's very up. fun. What have you been doing? Uh, on the weekend, I think I told you this last week, I ended up going to a um, car dealership and taking a car mm. for a test drive. No, no, you didn't tell us that. You said you were going to. Yeah, yeah, I was going oh, to. Oh, it was your date night. It was a date night. Yeah, already. yeah. So we ticked that off the yeah, list. Yeah, fucking oath. What did you, that, what'd you that, drive? It was fun. We walked, like we just walked up to it and you started getting like nervous <laughs> and mad. shit. And we were like, like what law are we going to come up with? And like, like, okay, we obviously don't want to like – kick off with a lie. We're going to have to have it there just in case we need to have backup information. Yes, yes I am a millionaire. Yeah. 
I could afford to buy this. Yeah, well, I did drop in so unnecessarily. He was just asking questions about what car I wanted. I was like, oh, look, I want to get an SUV. I haven't really, like, thought about it. Like, recently just came into a bit of money, so just seeing what we could get for an upgrade. No, that's not bad. That's not bad, eh? Because it's vague enough. Yeah, that's not terrible. Yeah. But it's not, like, it's not totally unnecessary. Yeah, but yeah. I think me, yeah, it's letting him know that me budgets, yeah. I can get in a nice car. Yes. Which is completely which is com- bullshit. Yeah, I was just- <laughs> <laughs> completely But to be fair, mate, they're fucking... They're car salesmen. Yeah. They, they're the, they've got the worst rep of all. They, they deserve to be lied to. And this guy did a good job. Like, he gave a good impression and shit like that. But, you know, that's that's also their job. Uh, said that to him. And I think when I say that, my expectation was is, like, they were kind of like, oh, fair enough. He's like, but he made a joke, like, oh, I'm selling some drugs or something. Yeah. And I was like, I could have fucking had, like, someone pass away, cunt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but he's I, like, I didn't. He's but- then angling it like... Oh, if this guy's selling drugs, he might pay cash for this car. Yeah. Oh, so he's probably putting he, a feeler. He's, yeah, he's like playing 4 D chess oh, with you. You're fucking right, actually. Yeah, he would have been like, yeah, you could because if you are selling drugs, you can have this car for a little bit, like no GST. He started raising his eyebrows at me. Yeah, and also, can I have some drugs? <laughs> yeah, potentially. But yeah. we're walking around these like real nice cars, like half electric ones, U Butte ones, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind something like this. And me and Lil were like keeping the facade up while people aren't around. We're like, oh, you know, we could put this in the garage and shit like that. Nice. <laughs> Nice. End up in this RAV4. He leads us to all this RAV4. He's like, look, this is like a medium kind of size SUV. If you want something like this, take this for a drive and see how you like it. And it is fucking mad. Yeah. Like you get in a nice car and you go, oh. It's hectic. Um, it's hectic. It's fucking hectic, especially when you've been driving around a shitty Toyota. Yeah, you don't you don't care about nice things until you experience them. And exactly. you're like, oh, fuck. This is, life is better when you've got money. Yeah. <laughs> and when you don't have money, you tell yourself, it's not important and then you like do nice things or have nice things or get a bit of money. You're like, fuck, actually money's super fucking- Yeah. It's not everything, but it's uh, the majority. It make your life pretty comfortable. <laughs> fuck it up. I think I will be an SUV man when, once I am in that bracket to afford something like that. Yeah. I don't need a ute and it is like a good size car. Um, mad digital dash on this thing, RAV4. I was like, oh, fuck. I didn't even realize until like halfway through I started test driving it. Like it it was all fucking digital. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. A 10 minute drive, dropped it back. He talked to us for about like 10, 15, like being like, you know, is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah. It takes us over this big screen and starts showing you how you can customize them. And I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. Yeah. Beauty, get home. Mrs. actually starts like figuring out how much it would cost and shit. I'm like, this is not the plan. Yeah, no, We're no, not no the, doing this. It was just a joke, fun thing. We're yeah. not buying the car. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. But I didn't really um, realize how like cheap you can pay off a car for like, if you're willing to get one for four years. I've had a car for over four years. It's like a phone plan. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, but then you pay. Oh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, well, if you pay, you're paying you. less than 200 bucks like a week. Yeah, phone doesn't cost you that much. Well, well, I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> you fucking hell, phone. Yeah. Well, I'll pay like a bit, like just over a hundred or something a month. Oh yeah, true. A month. Yeah. What am I talking about? It would cost about? you like eight phones. It'd be like having eight phones. Yeah, fuck that up. Mm. <laughs> true. I would be fucking pretty expensive phone. Yeah. Uh, speaking of also shopping, the missus. It was actually that same day before we went. She went and did some shopping with her mum, taking after you. You know, getting a bit of a girls' day. Go to spend some money. Girls' day out. Let's go. Uh, Wanted to go, I don't know, in the shopping centre. Her mum took her into this bed shop. She's come back. She's like, oh, I can't believe mum made me go into this fucking bed shop before we went into Rebel. That's where she wanted to go. I bought these things because she conned me into buying it. And then when I got to Rebel, I realised that I didn't have like that much money for the thing I wanted. And this is why she's carrying the fucking shopping for both of them. And I'm like, well, you didn't have to spend it. She's like, well, I've already bought it now. I'm like, oh, take it back then. She's like. It's already done. I'm like, what are you whinging about? What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is it? What's happening right now? Just looking for a blame to someone. like, you spend the money. No just because your mum told you to she, do it. Did she have a gun to your head? Why, <laughs> why did you fucking buy it? I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, well, we're going to go back that way anyway. So, nah. I was like, So you just, Shut you bought up. something that you wanted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you wanted someone to blame for it. <laughs> mum made me. I told her she was getting called out for that too. Yeah, good. Because that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, that's insane behavior. Uh, that's it, chick behavior. Yeah. It's extremely chick behavior. Anything else for you during the week, mate? Yeah, I'd a hell. I'd a, I've been so quiet on the weekends. Oh. I'm actually fucking enjoying it. I've been, I've been going on my runs, but like, I'm still. So I'm, <laughs> it's pretty funny. So I'm still like pigging out. So like Fridays and Saturdays are obviously pig nights. Yep. But then I'm still. I'll get up obviously. and go for a run. But uh, the I've just been going to the gym because the weather's been bad. 
but I've been like, I've had to strategically because I'm farting. Like after I, after I chow down, obviously the farts are yeah. nuclear. Hundred percent. It's crazy, and uh, so I'm like going going on a nice little bog trot, but I'm like on a treaty. Yeah, but yeah. I'm crop dusting my immediate vicinity. Yeah. So I've got to be strategic about which treadmill I pick. So I'm kind of parking myself away. And uh, you're being considerate for sure. Yeah. It's the only op, mate. These farts are. It's bad. Ghastly. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> so the Sunday morning in particular, because I chowed down big time on Saturday night, we got a, got a, ended up drilling like 140 bucks worth of Chinese, like big Chinese order. Shocking. Pigged out. And uh, Sunday morning was particularly heinous. Well, that'll do it. Too, on the blurter. And so I'm, I'm trodding along and I'm dropping a few. There's no one around. It's, it's early. There's no one there. So I'm sort of pretty fucking fancy and free with the farts. And I'm going, oh, geez, they're fucking ordinary. <laughs> And then a bloke parks up like two treadmills down from me. I was like, shit. And I still had a fair bit to go on my run. And I was like, damn, like there's there's more. There's going to be more. And I was worried about hitting him. And then I seen the fan and I was like, oh, there's a fan. And then thank fuck I was like downwind. Oh, so I was yeah. like, there was a fart coming. I was like, I don't know if I can hang on to this. And I backed myself to like let it go and let the fan. Oh, you're timing it with well, the fan. Well, the fan was just kind of set up and I was downwind. So it was only going to blow him away from this oh, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, Bear grills it. And I was like, just check the conditions. I was like, fuck, I'm just going to have to let it rip. Now, and I've ripped it. And then I, sm- I was like, oh, God. And then it blew. He didn't, he didn't flinch. Oh, good shit. I, I immediately turned to this guy to see because I was like, he's going to. He can't not react to that if he smells it. How, much of, how much of a head turn are we talking? Like glance territory? Because you can't make it too obvious. No, it was pretty obvious. I needed to know because <laughs> there was more coming. So, no, it was good. It was, it was pretty strategic. It sort of paid off. Well, I think it did. You would have been rocking headphones, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you could just feel that it was a silent or you're not sure? Oh, I'm pretty in tune with my body, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, the noise because there's music playing already in the gym and then the pounding of the treadmill, mm. it'd have to be fairly – well, I don't know. Oh. I, I was confident that it wasn't audible. He had headphones in too. Oh, that's all right. He would have been. And then, I mean, obviously the smell is another fact. Like sound is one thing, but smell is. That's the main factor. You, you can't. Attention. No matter how loud the music is, <laughs> <laughs> you're not covering that kind of. You're turning it up over yeah. the machine. So, so that was good. So I got, I, I, yeah, I mean, if anyone else is, you know, looking to, looking to fart in the gym, just make sure you're downwind of a I of used to nice fart all fan. the time in the gym and I went, bro, oh, I felt comfortable farting at a gym because like you said, I completely forgot. Everyone's got their headphones on. Yeah. You kind of get in a world of your own and then you're like, oh, shit, there's other people here. I've been just crop dusting these joints. <laughs> Something else that used to like fuck me off about the gym, well, it like mind boggle me was treadmill etiquette. Like you, everyone wants like one treadmill between them. You know what I mean? Yeah, At it's kind of yeah. odd, it's particularly for chicks. Like yeah. you know, just a dude, like it's almost like the urinal kind of etiquette. Like you don't, if there's, if there's room, you should be given at least one. Yep. Um, one treadmill between people because it is. Yeah, it's creepy behavior. Uh, and I, but like sometimes you had to like slide in between two people. I fucking hated it. Like mm. it just, it, like you said, it's just like the urinal. It feels uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm more inclined to hit a gap in a urinal than I am to hit a free tree. Yeah, at least in a urinal if you fart, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's more play on. Like I've been standing next to, it's, it's actually one of the funnier things that can happen to you. It's like you're pissing and then a bike next to you just rips a huge fart and you're just like, yeah, yeah. respect. Plus it's like heaps more normal to have my cock out. Like no one starts screaming and running away when yeah, I do if that you at get the urinal. A, you get on a treadmill and get your penis out and start yeah. farting, it's going to be a problem. Uh, that's how I lost <laughs> my anytime membership. going to have to find a new gym. <laughs> So that was good. There is something I did want to address on the pod. It's kind of it's kind of probably borderline old news now, but I think it's pretty important that we speak about it. Extremely. Uh, we, I would have liked to have spoken about it last week, but Andrew Hamilton was here and we had mushrooms and drug dealing and, and jail to talk fun. about. Yeah. We had other stuff to talk about, but this is something that I think is pretty, <laughs> pretty important. Supersedes all of that. Yeah. Uh, we're in a drought. We are. I'm not talking about the weather. I'm talking about the Kingston Biscuit. The Kingston Bicky drought. Yeah. Uh, we have, we're very fortunate we have someone on the inside that knows one of the higher ups at Arnott's mm-hmm. and it was brought to our attention that there is, there is actually, I, I noticed this, I was, I think I talked about it on Patreon, didn't I? I haven't spoken about it on this show, but I was going to, on my usual treat runs and I was noticing consistently that there was no Kingston's. I was mm-hmm. in the mood for a Kingston and I'm talking like three or four different of my, of my treat fucking hotspots that I hit. There was no Kingston's. I was like, there's something wrong. And I was concerned. And then obviously, yeah, we, 
via this man reached out to to Arnott's and they confirmed that there is a genuine shortage of Kingston's. Yeah. Which is fucked. By the way, we should mention that this man reached out via the Daily Blue newsroom on Facebook. Yeah. That's where we got our mole from. Yeah. If you're not in that group, get in there. Get in the newsroom. Get in the newsroom. But, uh, yeah, so we do have a – like there is an official shortage on Kingston's. They reckon it's going to be sorted like by the end of next month, but I'm not confident. That's what, what they say. Because that's cri- cause if they say that it's not, then it's crisis mode. Mm. Then you're looking at what happened to Sarah Lee and you might be going into fucking administration. An- that angry, could be angry mobs will be coming at your door. That could be like fucking real bad. Think the, the Simpsons movie, Pitchforks, Liar. Oh, fucking, yeah, 100%. Um, and then I do appreciate a lot of people have been reaching out and being like, oh, they're like, they're sending, they're, you know, there's Monte Carlo, like sending us photos of Monte Carlos. Like, oh, there's still Monte Carlos. Tell me like, you feel, bro. Yeah. Like, I couldn't give a fuck if there's Monte Carlos, <laughs> mate. Like, people, there's people, like, it's obviously for some reason people think the Monte Carlo is a superior biscuit and that that's a good substitute for me. If I wanted Monte Carlos, I wouldn't be upset that the Kingston's not wouldn't there. wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So, there's like, nah, look, I'm at fucking Honeysuckle. There's like heaps of Monte Carlos. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I want Kingston's and there's no Kingston's. And the reason that there's no Kingston's and there's Monte Carlos is because the fucking Monte Carlos suck. The Kingston's are good and everyone bought the Kingston's. Yep. If the Kingston's were shit, the there drought would be or not, a fucking they'd, shortage. They'd still be on the shelves mm. regardless of if there's fucking supply issue or not. They'd still be sitting on the shelves. So, yeah, appreciate everyone reaching out and telling me there's Monte Carlos, but like – uh, you know, I already said it, but stick a fair up your ass. Like, I, <laughs> I don't want Monte Carlos. I want Kingston's. That also, actually, I fucking, I need to get the, the pack up, but I did want to- um, Rank your bickies. Yeah, I wanted your opinion on it too, because I wanted to rank the Arnott's assorted creams. And by the way, Arnott's, we do want to be on your good books. We'd actually love to have you as part of the show. Oh, it's- for sure. You saw what we did for Sarah Lee. Like- <laughs> we bought him out of administration, administration single-handedly, some are saying. So, the Arnott's assorted creams, I need to- just keep padding for a sec, mate, because I've got to find out what's actually in it and then I want to rate it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Arnott, as I said, we would love to have you part of the show. We don't want the pitchforks. We don't want the flames. We don't want the people coming to your factories, coming to your door and kicking it down. We want to help you. Bluey and I will, are willing to do that, but it will be coming at a cost. Maybe for me, it would be money. Maybe for Bluey, it will be a I'll couple do it of for Kingston's. Ki- I'll do it for a couple of sleeves of Kingston's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've got... I say the Delta Cream, which I think is the little brown one that's got the white chocolate in it. It's sort of like an Oreo stunt double. Okay. The Kingston, the Monte Carlo, the orange slice, the shortbread and cream. So for me, if I was to go last to first, uh, I'd probably go the – fuck, the Delta Cream – does nothing for me. So which one, the Delta Cream is the Oreo That's the dark. It's a, it's a poor man's Oreo. Okay. I would put the Delta Cream dead last, followed very closely by the orange, orange slice. Yeah. Because that sucks. Um, maybe maybe a Monte Carlo third last. Shortbread and cream, I don't mind because I'm a shortbread guy. And then obviously Kingston in top spot. Off the top of my head, I don't mind that. I think the bottom two – are likely to be interchangeable at some point. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we need to do this Bicky challenge for sure. Yeah. But, the De- I mean, the Delta Creek, like, I don't know why they make fucking how many are there? One, two, three, four. There's five. In the, there's, you there's, could do three of those. There's you? three of those that could get cut. Yeah. And you, the- could, you could literally just have probably shortbread creams, Monte Carlos for all the Monte Carlo fucking doodle suckers, and then the Kingston. And you could probably cull completely the orange slice and the Delta cream. Well, when it's... Who's buying a whole pack of orange slices? Exactly. A, a fucking cereal you, killer, that's who. You eat an orange slice if, like, last resort. Mm-hmm. Even then, you probably just go without a biscuit. You eat it reluctantly. Yeah, like, yeah, not required. <laughs> I was listening on um, Hamish and Andy, and people talk about how, well, they were talking about how their missus have, like, too much empathy, and yeah. people, like, rang in with their reasons. Like, Andy's missus would, like, feel bad for a car that's coming last at a race. She was like, why, <laughs> why can't they slow down? <laughs> Some chick rang in and was like, I feel bad when I'm eating the multi-packs of biscuits, so I have to eat one of each. So and I'm don't always, get left yeah, And I'm always so full. <laughs> that's really cute. That's very, very They're cute. They're the people who eat in the orange slices. That's very, very cute. The people who just feel sorry for them. Yeah, I mean, it's just out of pity. It's, yeah. a, it's a pity fuck. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a pity fuck. Oh, can you imagine finding out you were a pity fuck? Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, well, yeah, I can. Still- <laughs> <laughs> I have my girlfriend every time. Yeah, exactly. Um, another funny thing in my transition into womanhood. <laughs> yeah. So I'm obviously a big shopper now. And you know I'm not a TV series guy. Yes, I do know that. Bro, I've been binging some trash TV. I'm excited for this. Owning Manhattan. 
I don't know this. Bro, it's uh, the gayest shit I've ever done. <laughs> and you love it. And I fucking love it. So first of all, I'm a shopaholic now. Yeah. I'm just frothing packages, turning up <laughs> my door. So then the last- You got your nice new pants. It's bad, bro. <laughs> it's bad. I need to get back on the piss. Yeah, what the fuck? Did the piss like keep you straight, dude? I don't know. You get, <laughs> it's concerning. You get a little bit gay. I when got you're off, off the, the source and I'm just like, now I'm just shopping and binging trash yeah. TV and loving every minute of it. So I've just binged this whole series of owning Manhattan. Can, can I guess what it is? Is it? Is it it's a, real estate. Yeah, is it? I'm going to say it's real estate. It's real oh, estate. Fuck you, dude. Talk- <laughs> <laughs> and they're all, everyone in it is a bitchy girl. Girl or a gay dude or the main guy in it, I'm sure he's he's like married, but he's, he's definitely going to gay orgies. Yeah, and because it's New York, they're all super well dressed and super well groomed, and they're selling like these hundred million dollar apartments. Yeah, and I'm sitting there with the missus going like, "How good's this?" Yeah, it's so crap, man. I, I think they're like popular version of that is called Selling Sunset or something like that. Like similar. I style think that's probably show. the OG. Yeah. And then I've, I've just launched headfirst into owning Manhattan and watched like back to back to back to back, oh. like 45 minute episodes. I drilled like four and then I think I had a feed and then this watched. This is so disappointing. Mate. I was so keen for you to start watching some like mad TV shows so we could talk about it and you're just watching gay real estate shit. That sucks. Watch Love Island or something. That's less gay than that. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> So I've gone, I've gone head first and just binged like this whole series and like frothed it. And I was like disappointed I couldn't find another series of it. Was it a was it a walk in on the bride watching it situation or somehow Con you just went oh Do right you know I, I got so into the show I don't even remember how I found Damn, it yeah you're in deep bro and I was like watch so we get to like the end you know when they tease you with like the next yeah, episode yeah yeah. And uh, like f- one episode finished and it was just the boss firing someone, but you didn't know who it was. And I'm going like, it's going to be it? this guy. Yeah. It's going to be him now. Nah, Cause remember, mate, it's summer. And then I thought back about my behavior. And I was like, this is completely unacceptable. <laughs> this, <laughs> like, look at, look at me. I'm sitting here vaping, yeah. t- watching reality TV. Like, talking about shopping. Talking about shopping. It's, I'm done. Yeah, you're everything you hate. The man. podcast success success has changed me. <laughs> yeah, the podcast success has fully changed me. The podcast doing well has just completely changed everything for me. That's so fucking funny. Is there like got like certain sellers that you hate yeah. and ones that you like? 100%. Yeah, of course. And it's like so clearly just the producers doing their jobs, and I'm just like hook line. I'm like a dumb chick. Yep. I'm sitting there like yeah, he's a, he's a dickhead. She's a bitch. He's cool. Like he's a dickhead. I don't think she likes him. It, uh, yeah, I'm fully got so invested. More more invested than I have in any any probably apart from Shane it's Gillis's because reality TV, bro. It's yeah. fucking good. Like yeah. as in at getting ya. It's just it's just love on for people your age. It got show. me. Yeah. It got me. The houses are probably grass. Yeah. In Manhattan. <laughs> 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 fucking it home. was so sick. <laughs> I'd love to live in something. Well, I wouldn't because it'd be fuck living in New York, but I'd love to just be in one of those huge apartments. Yeah, eh? it was sick. It was yeah. So that was like my weekend was like farting in the gym. Eating biscuits and watching Owning Manhattan. With a cup of tea, Bicky's tea and Owning Manhattan. Just bulk, just bulk biscuits and just, just watching bitchy real estate shows <laughs> and just frothing it. It's fucking unbelievable. I, got, I need to go for a drink soon. Oh, that brings me to my next point. NRL Vegas got announced. It did. It's locked in. Yeah. So there's uh, the- Wiles, Panthers. Wiles, Panthers, Raiders, Sharks. And then the Gillaroos are playing England and Warrington are playing Wigan. So there's four games of footy. So that's the next- You're going to try and go? No. Yeah. Fucking hope I am. Yeah. So that'll that'll all depend on circumstances financially uh, and everything else in March next year. But that's like the punters club are pushing pretty hard for it. I've got two definites coming with me. Gone. Um, two of my nearest and dearest have already said we're in. So it's just about maybe trying to get the punters club over the line. Uh, but that's got me horny. And then, yeah, Cox Plate, I think in all You spend September. the whole time in the hotel, mate. New season of fucking owning Manhattan will yeah, come out. potentially. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I've got to catch up with Ryan Sir and the girls. So, yeah, so that's that's very exciting. Uh, it's, it's fucking ages away. It's like nine months away, but I'm yeah. fucking, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty revved up for that. Yeah, no, that'll be fucking sick. I mean, you had a ball last time and you had I to come straight have, back into getting punched in the head as soon as you got on. I could not have had more fun uh, in our old Vegas. So it's fucking, it seems like it's more expensive this time, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, well they knew it was a bit it. of a hit, I suppose. It and might have gone cheap out. to get everyone in and then, yeah. Up so. the prices. Well, yeah. speaking of being overseas, I am taking steps towards my mm. goal to get overseas. Uh, it's looking like a, in a couple months' time, I'm going to try and get to Bali. 
Fuck yeah. So that like that's a just go there for ten days, you know, dip the toes in. Like my first time kind of being overseas with a bit of freedom as an adult. Bali's great. Yeah. So yeah. you've been oh that's right, you went on that dating show. Yeah, there. I've been a few times. I think I went for schoolies and then I went maybe I had a, I met a mate there for a holiday and yep. then I went on that yeah, that ridiculous fucking Date that dating show, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I'm, um, I'm Barley the- Blind Dates with Hit 106.9. So, so crazy Insane. that they put that on a radio. Anyway, Insane. Uh, I've been to Bali as well, actually a couple of times, but only as like a kid. Like I think I was maybe oldest I've been there as like 14 or 15. Yeah. Bali's sweet. Yeah, getting some massages, yeah. shit like that. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And Ru- like cheap Ru- piss. Rubbing tugs every day. Wow. Cheap bin tangs. Every second. Every second day. Come back with a couple bin tang singlets. Yeah. F- nice, dra- nice pair of white Oakleys. Yeah. Knock off dragon singlet. Fuck yeah. So I'm keen for that. I mean, I still, I got to fucking pay for me passport. I was That's what I spent the other day doing, just trying to get a fucking passport. Uh, it was easier than it has been previously. I don't know what's changed. Probably I just got my head screwed on. But like four hundred, nearly just under four hundred bucks for a passport. Australian passports are like the most expensive in the world right now. Oh, that was what I was getting emails about the fucking passport thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, some that's good. A fucking hacker's got my passport. Yeah, I was getting emails about because we've got the joint email account. But I was getting emails from like passport agency, blah 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 blah, blah and I was like. Oh, that's sick. Like oh. Some, some fucking, someone online has my identity. Yeah. Mad. I think I put it as like my second backup. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's probably put you in a bit of ease, eh? Oh, I was at work. I was like, oh, good. I've been hacked. Yeah. Great. Very good. My no, passport, that's, that's not that important. Uh, yeah. But that'll be fine. Me, the bride, try, my mate's probably going to come. Still sorting all that out. But if you've got any recommendations in Bali, I'd be keen to hear them. Yeah, the, the people, people via the dialings would be the guy for that because I, I was, yeah, I don't remember much. <laughs> my last trip there was fucking blind every day. Uh, I am nervous for the, ex- I mean, I'll, I'll obviously tell you all about it once I do it, but like having to pay off coppers, did you have to do that? We did, uh, the my, when I went for schoolies. Yeah. Yeah, we were riding scooters and that's that was a big, I don't know if it's like that now. I think it's, mate, from what I understand now, a lot of, um, Changu, it's changed a lot. I think there's a lot of money's come in when the war kicked off. I don't know, I'm talking out my ass here, but this is like what you've heard. Ch- Changu is really flash now. I've heard because of a lot Changu. of a lot of like people from Eastern Europe got out of there when the war kicked off and have just pumped and developed Changu. So I don't think it's like I think there's parts of it like Kuda and stuff are still kind of like that, but yeah. I think a lot of it's pretty like, pretty fucking nice. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we were yeah we were just ha- like fucking riding scooters and then the coppers pulled us over and they're like. We, we just offered the money straight away because we knew and they're like, they took it and they're like, we'll see you in Denpasar tomorrow. And we're like, okay. And then we just left and then we're obviously not going to Denpasar tomorrow. Oh, okay. Like you just give them the money and they say, I'll see you tomorrow and you just don't see them. Oh, so it's like a bit of like that. They just kind of say that. I assume so. Yeah. Well, I didn't okay. go to Denpasar the next day. I just <laughs> it was like, fuck. You were just like a wanted criminal in Bali. Mm-hmm. There's posters of you everywhere. everywhere. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty standard when we were young. That's fucking... That's like fucking. I've heard like Vietnam's like the new kind of Bali, like it's kind of like the new cheap place to go, which makes sense based off what you're saying. If it's a bit more developed and shit over there now, yeah, I don't people know. find somewhere new and cheap. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about Vietnam. Fucking, I'm, I'm sure it's sick. I'm sure, it'd be good. Um, what else? Something else. Oh, I had a really good big brekkie too at uh, Poppy's in Gateshead. Fucking real good big brekkie, like big dog. I think I already talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that. Dog that might hash, have been a page. Had one, extra hash browns and shit. It was fucking. It was sick. Yeah, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I was that keen for it. Very horny. But yeah, no, that's all I've been doing. Just eating and uh, and bitching and shopping. Just being a fucking slaying. Good catch up having a guest on. Gave us a lot to fucking cover, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Curious. Plenty happened. Oh, I'll, I'll finish with one more thing. I, I had like uh, six beers or so on the Saturday night, just gone. And I came home and I get on TikTok. And if you scroll for a bit every now and then, it'll just give you someone live. Yep. And it actually works in well, talking about reality TV. And there was just some like 50-year-old dude who was on like the last maths. And it, it was he was talking to some other Sheila who was on it that he didn't marry it. And like they, people were just asking him questions about other people that were on the show, and they were talking shit about it. A little live Q and A. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even like finish maths. I normally I used to love it. Last year I got off it, but they're like, oh, someone asked them about Richard. They're like, oh, Richard lied to us, blah blah blah. And I'm just drunk and thinking this. I'm like, oh, I know Richard, and he's no bullshit. I use a talking shit. Oh, about did you write that yeah, in the Q yeah. and A? Nice. And they were like. Well, you don't know the fucking Richard I know. Like, I just started burning him oh, up. Oh, so you got into it with him? Yeah. Nice. I'm on the Daily Blue account as well. Oh, no. 
and I was just like, and I obviously don't know Richard. I'm like, you're a full of shit. Richard would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not my boy Dickie. Yeah. And they're like, you don't know him the way I know him, mate. Oh, we, uh, you know, the Facebook algorithm would, well, I don't know if it still does it, but like it will show you when your mates comment on things. It yeah. like show, we had one, <laughs> we got one mate that was shocking for getting paro and like commenting on Fox Sports articles. Oh, I just fired so, up. Yeah, he'd be like, yeah. I think they should be fucking – they should be standing for the anthem <laughs> like that shit. Genty's right. And it would come up on your feed the next morning and then we'd just be in the group chat like, have a few last night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you dickhead. Oh. Like just fucking getting fired up in the comment section with the other retards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Latrell only has a go when he feels like yeah. it. Yeah, and then it'd just be evidence of it the next day. Be like, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> Yeah, see, that, that's me with this shit. Getting fight, getting drunk and getting fired up in the comment section. I what was fucking fuck? pissing myself. Doing it. it made me remember that, like, I love, like, trolling. Like, it's a trait that I weaned out. But, like, in that moment, I was like, this is fucking so funny. You do it from your fucking own account. This time. <laughs> <laughs> fucking well, well he full goes like daily blue fucking like calling it out i was like oh. yeah yeah i don't think people who watch maths probably listen to this anyway so i think that's a pretty safe bet no nah, yeah. off on them that was really fun to burn him up hey eh? very good uh news time mate news time Christian church goes viral for selling plots of land in heaven that's fucking handy uh, a christian pastor is going viral for saying plots of uh, land in heaven for a hundred dollars per square meter. That's a good price. He claims that in 2017, God authorized him to sell those <laughs> plots, guaranteeing purchases a spot near God's palace, regardless of the plot size. He got a, he got the DA approved from the big guy himself. Uh, a circulating brochure details the purchasing process, showing a middle class house in the sky and a family of four ancestors. Uh, uh, uh sorry, a family of four ascending towards the golden steps of it. Uh. Payment options include Visa, Mastercard, Google Pay, American Express, and Apple Pay with instalment plans available. Yeah, well, I mean, you got no excuse then. Get on board. Yeah, get on board, mate. I mean, a bit of afterpay. I'm sure God would accept that money. Yeah, God's good. God, God loves tick. Um, <laughs> I love these like holy leaders of mega churches, and they just uh, they all either turn out to be scammers or pedophiles or drug addicts or all three. And God told me. And God, like God said, I could. Um, like smoke yeah. ice and molest kids, and you're like, what? <laughs> Whoa! Like, it, it always happens. Like it, or, like they just get too much power, or they're like, they're fucking like they're 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 married and they're rooting everyone. Or mm-hmm. it's so good. It's fucking so good. It's like, I, I mean, I'm under the impression that they have at least their lives are pretty well looked after. Like they don't have to pay tax. I'm sure they make a decent amount of money and shit like that. Yeah. But it's like praying. It's like, God, like I need to make more money. And then he just gets this idea. He's like, what if I sell? It's like, oh, God gave me the idea. Yeah. Because I had the idea after praying, God gave it to me. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you're right. I think they don't, they probably don't see it as I'm fucking scamming these cunts. They're like, no, this is actually mad. I'm doing these guys a favor because I'm getting them, Closer to God in heaven. And I got, I mean, I can't do, you don't do nothing for nothing. Mm-hmm. Like you got to, you got to fucking do it. Yeah, well, exactly. You not, nothing's free in this world, but then like, I don't know. Or the next. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Yeah. What's this holy heaven where fucking everything's peaceful and lovely? Yeah. yeah you still have to pay to be there. Fucking oath. Actually, I need to understand who paid for this. I didn't even think about it on that deeper level. Like, <laughs> are we all going to be homeless in heaven? Yes. If we don't buy these plots of land. You'll be on the streets begging and <laughs> and pooping and pissing on the streets. God, please. Yeah. This is worse this is worse than fucking my regular life. Yeah, I did fucking well back there. Yeah. It's like, oh, you should have bought it off that guy, I told him. Yeah. God's first realtor? You had your chance. You fucking blew it. If there's real estate agents in heaven. Well, they're there not is, in heaven, they're on earth. There is not heaven. There is not one real estate agent going to heaven. <laughs> So but fuck. They're all going, yeah, yeah. No, nah, they're all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> they're all going to hell. You much of a museum guy, Gabo? I uh, haven't been one in fucking recent memory, actually. Well, this might tickle your fancy. Arizona's Poozeum teaches science using fossilized turds. <laughs> You've spiked my interest. The, the name Poozeum got my attention immediately. Yeah, fuck yeah. The variety of dung on display ranges from minuscule termite droppings to a massive specimen that weighs 20 pounds. That's one of mine. I was going to say, does it say where that one came from? Yeah, it came from the gym that I go to. <laughs> yeah. After one of my crop dusting sessions. Williams, Arizona, this is from. 
One way to help tell how a Tyrannosaurus Rex digested its food is to look at its poop. Fuck but off. How good's that? Bone fragments in a piece of fossilised excrement at a new museum in northern Arizona, aptly called the Poozeum, are among the tinier bits of evidence that indicate T-Rex wasn't much of a chewer, but rather swallowed whole chunks of prey. Oh, shit. The sample is one of more than 7,000 on display at the museum that opened in May in Williams, a town known for its Wild West shows. Oh, fuck off, Ad. Stand by. Have you heard the theory? Oh, you go. You're right. Uh, for its Wild West shows along Route 66, wildlife attractions and a railway to the Grand Canyon National Park. The Pooh's uh, <laughs> <si> <laughs> sign features a bright green T-Rex cartoon character sitting on a toilet. <laughs> That's sick. To grab attention from the buzzing neon lights and muffled 1950s music emanating from other businesses. Inside display cases filled with uh, coropolites, fossilised faeces and uh, from animals that lived millions of years ago, line the walls. <laughs> they range from minuscule termite droppings to a massive specimen that weighed nine kilos. This is way. F I wish I wanted to know where that last fucking shit came out of. That'd be a T Rex turd for sure. But how do you get it? How they can't exist, can they? Poo would just like fucking. What do you? Well, call no, they it? get fossilized. Everything gets. It all gets. It goes into the ground. and gets fossilized. So Big you, fossilized turd. So if you shat on the ground, it would get fossilized. I think it would depend where you shit, mm. and it would have to not get washed away. But I don't know. It decomposes is the word I'm looking for. Surely poo decomposes. Yeah, and maybe not when they're fucking that big. Nine kilos. <laughs> yeah. I've gone close to nine kilos, but that's nine kilos is a fucking insane poo. One of the all time touchdowns. That's fucking yeah. 100%. <laughs> no wipe after it as well. Yeah, yeah. poo's him. I reckon I could have a couple worthy contenders that might be fucking hanging in the poo's him. Oh, I've done one touchdown in my life and I actually went out and like told all my mates. Yeah, hey, for sure. That's the best shit I've ever done. I have, uh, I have those moments where like you'll get up sometimes and I'll be like, damn, I wish – like you, you'll finish and you'll be like, oh, I want to send a photo of this to the boys but then like, obviously you wipe and cover it in TP and you're like, it's probably a weird thing to do anyway to send a photo. But yeah. like sometimes I'm like, damn, the boys will think that's funny. <laughs> I, I'm not into photos of shit but like if something's crazy, yeah. like I want to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, there's been times where like, because <laughs> ages ago I remember I already spoke about it, but our toilet bowl's busted. It's kind of twisted in the yep, back. Yep, yep. So like I like sometimes I've tiger claws like insanely high on the bowl. Like I'm talking like fucking fifty mil from yeah. fucking exit zone, like from the exit zone. But well, scary for piss chiseling, but they yeah. will be chiseled. Yeah, but uh. And then sometimes I'm like, the boys will think that's hilarious. I'm like, don't you don't need to send your mates a photo of your skin marks. You're 30 of yesterday's last. You're 32. You don't need to send your mates. But then I just want to do it. Yeah. So do you do it? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I think you need to get like a photo next to it, like yeah. selfie with it or something. Nice little selfie. Mix it up. With the tiger claws. Yeah. Yeah. The Puzam is great. I love that people, someone came up with that idea, put money into it, made it happen. There's employees. Where do you work? I'm at the Puzam. I think they worked back from the name because you say that name and you go, there's something in that. Yeah. You got to. When, yeah. when you say something as fucking awesome as Puzam, yep. you got to follow that. Yeah. See that. Out it's great sure. that they didn't. Like because it's science and archaeology, they didn't go like the Nash the Arizona Museum of Fossilized Fecal Species. Yeah. Like, yeah. They didn't go something fucking boring with it. They went, nah, this is the Poozeum. Like the people are so much more inclined to go to a fucking Poozeum than they are. I don't know how long it took, but it clearly has happened where like nerds have realized that marketing's important. I reckon Musk did it. Yeah, probably. Musk was probably the first borderline cool nerd. Mm. Like the rest of them just they just – and, like, the older you get, the more you realise being smart is undeniably important. But, like, but, but, I think everyone would rather God, just, it's not cool. No, nah, it's incredibly <laughs> uncool. No, nah, it, it is cool, but being a fucking dickhead about it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad the poo -zam exists. No but, no one wants to, like, hang out with the smartest person in the room. No, you just feel fucking dumb. Exactly. Yeah. Making people feel stupid. Do, have you heard the yarn that they reckon T-Rexes were actually more likely to be birds? And like covered in feathers. Yeah, right. I know raptors are directly related to birds. Yeah, yeah. They, they reckon like they fucked up the bone structure of a T Rex, and like instead of like that, their arms are the other way, uh, and it was more inclined to be like a wing thing. Bit of inbreeding, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Puzine president and curator George Franzen brought his first chunk of fossilized feces from a shop in Moab, Utah when he was 18. <laughs> so he's a career poo collector. This dude's got a scat he, fetish. He already loved dinosaurs and fossils, but he'd never heard of fossilized poop. From there, his fascination grew. It was funny. It was gross. But I learned very quickly it could tell us how much – don't pretend it could teach us anything. You love poo. You, you're a scat man. You love poo. You love scat. You watch scat porn. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what you get for opening the Poseum, mate. Sledges scat. like that. <laughs> that's scat. Very good. <laughs> Roll us into the next yeah, one, bro. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm actually curious to hear how you pronounce this. Staying on the subject of poo, uh, we've got a problem at the Yosemite National Park. Yeah. Used toilet paper is becoming an all too familiar sight. <laughs> The US National Park Service is pleading, pleading such a good word for this, with visitors to Yosemite National Park to put a stop to a site that's become all too familiar by not leaving their used toilet paper behind. NPS officials wrote on the California Park social media channels that rangers recently came across used toilet paper waving hello near (laughs) Ranchiera Falls, a full roll too. Officials wrote that the discovery is just the latest in a string of used toilet paper in the national parks. You can bring a sealable plastic bag to stash it in and even a cover bag, uh, even cover the bag in tape so you don't have to look at it, the post said, because really nobody wants to stumble upon a surprise package left behind by an anonymous outdoor enthusiast. So people are just crapping and wiping their ass and then leaving the fucking bog roll around. That's what I'd be fucking doing. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, what else do you do? Fuck, well, they want you to pick it up like you pick up your dog shit by the sound. Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably the right thing to do, but no one's doing that. Fuck no. <laughs> have Fuck you ever, no. Have you ever crapped in the bushes like that? Ah, oh, nah, uh, no. Nah. I told the yarn how I shot in a carton once. That's yes. the closest how I came to doing that. Yeah, I had to do it once. It's, it's the most vulnerable I've ever felt, I reckon. Mm. Like I was like hovering because I couldn't sit. We are on a job and the job was like in the bush kind of like scaffing and – um. And the guy was like, there's no toilet on site. We haven't got a port loo You can piss wherever you want. And if you need to crap, I've got toilet paper there. And you just go and shit in the bushes. I was like. Am I getting fucking double time for this car? No, I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. And uh, and then I, for the first spot I went to drop me trousers, I was standing on a nest of what I thought were fire ants. So I was like, well, that's not where I'm doing it. Then I relocated. And it's funny because like there's nothing to, there's no, I got kind of behind a tree. But I was like, I'm still, still open. I'm still fuck. exposed on every angle. I was like, man, I would be, mm. it would be so funny for one of the boys to come push me over right now. <laughs> and you're just like, if yeah. I was there, might push me over. Yeah, and I was just like hunched and crapping, and I was like, oh no, like pants down. It was, yeah, it's very, very funny. And then you're worried about getting crap on, like crapping in your own pants, mm-hmm. like your your pants actually catching your crap. That's day over. That's that's game over for sure. Do you reckon there's like. They, they would have to have a toilet on site. Nah, this was like a private job. It was like he's like, nah, it's just fucking the house is gutted. He's like, I'm not. I think he's a tight ass. He's like, I'm not paying yeah. for Portaloo. Like, you just yeah, do your best. For oh, us. I know, I know you would never. I'm saying like, surely there's a law that they would probably mm. have to. Like, that's probably fucking work health and safety shit. Yeah, but then some of the Portaloos on site are like, <laughs> you'd rather I'd do rather that. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I walk into these Portaloos, I'm like, well, I'll just crap. Like, yeah, I'll just crap fucking in this stream or something. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, very good. Uh, that's very, it's very funny that it's happening because, I mean, that's – yeah, Samity obviously gets visited a lot and a lot of people are crapping and just – sounded like one of them had said it was waving. They might have crapped and, like, stuck it to a tree. Just flailing in the wind. Yeah. For way too long, I thought that was your smite, eh? Yeah. I mean, you can't blame me for that one. Yes. It's – yeah. That one spelled fucking your smite. I only found out it was Yosemite, like, maybe two years ago. Yeah. Um, that does make me think, though, what are your thoughts on people – Leaving their dog shit when they go for a walk. That's you, that's a bashable offence. You pick up your dog shit? Yeah, you must pick up your dog shit. Yeah. There was it was it happened outside my house about six weeks ago. There was two young girls, like young, and their dog was crapping on my lawn. And they I could tell they didn't know what to do. And I just stood there and was like, I don't they're young girls, I don't care that they I was like you need to pick that up. Yeah. I was like, you cannot walk away from that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to. I was like, you weren't. You were going to fuck. I didn't say that, but I was like, you were going to fuck. You kind of gave him a nod. You were going to walk away. I was like, yep. And I just walked inside the front gate and just stood there. I was like, make sure they fucking pick it up. Mate, you cannot let your dog shit and walk away from it. That is fucking insane. Yeah, I've had some out the front of my house too. And I'm like, on concrete's you, you, worse. Like, yeah, it's like, fucked. Letting your dog shit on the footpath and then walking. You should, if, yeah, I mean, it should be. By law, if you let your dog do that, you should be allowed to be crash tackled into the poo. And it's, it's such an easy crime to get away with. Yeah. You know what I mean? People that aren't, it's like people who like toss rubbish out their windows yeah. when they're on a fucking highway. Oh, yeah. well, I'm not going to get any repercussion to this. Karma will get you, cunts. Yeah. It's insane. And it'll be bluey crash tackling you into your dog's shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> one day I'd like to get maybe in my retirement days when I'm looking to fill my time in, I'll just walk the streets and if I see someone crapping and walking away from their dog, I'll just or just like pick it up and throw it at them or something. Is there any excuse? 
Let's no. uh, let's okay. So on a beach. No. Can't tuck it under the sand. Oh, maybe, maybe on like a back beach, a secluded back beach, if you were to dig a hole and push it into the sand, a yeah. deep hole. Yeah. A de- like a deep hole and push we're it talking, into the sand. We're talking graveyard like, shit. Like, in two, like <laughs> two inches, just throw a bit of sand on top of it. <laughs> nice light coating. Yeah, yeah. A nice light crumbing of sand on the dog that's turd. A, you're setting a trap at that point. Yeah, that's worse. Yeah, a landmine. Yeah. Yeah, that, no, that's you, what that is. You must, you must pick up your dog shit. All right, someone's walked out unprepared. You're a fucking go back and get a bag. Yeah. I've gone back and got bags before. Finish thought, your walk. N- make yeah. note of where the shit is. Yeah, go back. We had around. a we had a, like a um a little fucking tag or like a little fucking bag container. Mm-hmm. And I got halfway on the walk and he crapped. And then I realised that the container was empty. So I went back and got a bag and went and picked the crap up. Yeah, you have to, you cannot let your dog. That's insane behaviour. <laughs> Were you being a bit staunch when you told these girls to pick up nah, their shit? No, I was deliberately not trying to be staunch, but I was like, they have to know that that has to get picked up. Yeah. I was like, you cannot walk away from that. Can, On can, my lawn, no <laughs> way. <laughs> Yeah, no. fair, so fair. Yeah, but like, yeah, I was, yeah, I could have had a I bad day. I can just day. imagine you just going like, you're picking that up. I was like, you, they were about to walk away and they were sort of looking at me. I was like, he's going to pick that up? Yeah. And they're like, oh, it. yeah, we're going to. I was like, yeah, go right. on then. Well, get into I'll it. be here and I'll get be into it. Yeah. And don't think you're above getting crash tackled into dog shit because I will crash tackle a 14-year-old into dog shit. Yeah, <laughs> you had your floor manager pants on. I had the PMs on for yeah. sure. Yeah. I had the PMs on, the poo manager. Gay furry hackers attack Heritage Foundation and release sensitive data related to Project 2025. This is an interesting headline. Hacktivists steal data from conservative think tank. A group dis- self-described as gay furry hackers, I love that they felt the need to um, explain that, claim to have stolen two gigabytes of data from conservative think tank and Heritage Foundation. Uh, the thing I find most funny about this is just describing your sexual proclivities like in your description of yourself? Yeah, I don't know why the fact that they're gay furries. I think it's pretty intimidating. I know Gillis had a really good bit about it. He's like he was talking about like the armies and like if every army was gay, it's almost scarier. Like a gay furry hacker, not not so much the gay part, but furries, you generally associate like people that are furries are pretty fucking tapped. Yeah. So like if they're hackers and they're furries, you might be like, Oh shit! These guys are fucking nuts. They could do anything. So it's kind of yeah, like an yeah, almost yeah, yeah. In- intimidation factor gets added to it. Like if you're just like a hacker, you could be. Sometimes there's noble hackers, or they're just doing it for um, like a fucking blackmail, or they want money. Or but if they're like a gay furry, there's almost like a Joker aspect to it. Where like this mm. guy, these guys are just fucking mad. A hundred percent. Like these guys could do anything. These guys get dressed up as animals and butt fuck each other. Like they could. <laughs> <laughs> that, and they've just stolen two gig of our data. They could. There's an inti- there's a huge intimidation factor when you add gay, gay furry hacker to it. I like just imagining. You know, in the movies, how they're always like, "Oh damn, no one's ever got past this firewall ever." And then you see like, <laughs> "I'm in." Like you just imagine yeah. someone in a furry mask doing that. They give yeah. themselves a little wag of the tail yeah. after they get through the firewall. Gives or whatever. Them a little pat on the head. Yeah, and then they fucking duck off to the litter box and just do a little shit yeah. in between hats. It's for sure. It's for sure for intimidation. Because I and do you know what I also bet they're not gay furries. I reckon they've just done it. They're framing just, it. I reckon no, not not framing them, but I reckon they've just done it to put the wind up the people that they hacked this think tank. I reckon they've just done it to be like more nerds marketing. Yeah, and yeah. they've been like. This thing tank will be like, oh shit! You know what gets headlines? Yeah, it's gay furries. And you know the other thing too? It's a conservative think tank, so they're right wing. They don't like gays or furries. So these guys have done it to be like, you got hacked by gay furries. Suck shit. <laughs> yeah. Everything, everything you hate just got the better of you. Gay furry hacktivist, man. I yeah. went, I, when I saw that headline, I was like, okay. I mean, that is great marketing. Of course, you're gonna click on that. Yeah. Um, let me see if there's anything here. A member of the group who goes by Vo, of course, something like that. Uh, told CyberScoop the hacktivist group launched the attack to provide transparency to the public regarding who exactly is supporting the heritage thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the data contains full names, email addresses, passwords, and username of those who have interacted with heritage. So they think, by the sounds of it, they seem like they're trying to do something noble, noble or at least in their heads. The noble gay furries. Noble gay furries. That's crazy. Yeah, I do like I do like your angle of them just like being capped as fuck. You don't know what they're gonna do with this data. What's yeah. coming next from the noble gay furry activists? Yeah, it could be anything. Gabo, have you? This might be a weird question. Have you ever climbed Mount Everest? No, 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 no not in my memory. No way. Neither. <laughs> but something that I enjoy about when I see people climbing Mount Everest, you know, like it's just generally like affluent 
generally affluent white people going out of their way to do something difficult as like a challenge or whatever. They do like to take on uh, hard tasks, white people typically, but yeah. every, all ethnicities. And ethnicities. the thing that I love about it is you see like these – People that have spent loads of money trying to do this really, really difficult thing and they're dressed like head to toe in North Face. But then there's like the little Malaysian Sherpas that do it like barefoot, carry all their bags mm-hmm. for them. And all they got to do is like trudge up, but the little Malaysian dudes like do all the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too dissimilar from our mate Phil from PK Mortgages. <laughs> you might have all the motivation, all the gear, all the equipment to buy a house, but not know the paths and the easiest way to do it. Phil and the team at PK Mortgages will be your Sherpa to home ownership. I don't mind that one. That's, that's pretty good. That's a, well put. He's a Sherpa. <laughs> Phil is small, but he's not uh, brown and Malaysian, but he is knowledgeable. Much like the Sherpas are with mountains, Phil is with finance and home loans. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's strong. He's willing and able. He's willing and able. Uh, you can get in contact with Phil and the team from PK Mortgages. If you're someone who's in the market for your first home, uh, maybe an investment property, they also do finance, can help you with things like business loans, um, commercial real estate. You need some tools. Yeah. Or maybe you just need a personal loan to go and climb fucking Mount Everest like we just said. <laughs> Phil is the man to speak to. You can get in touch with him on 0420-660-804 or you can head on over to pkmortgages.com.au. That is P for – what's P for this week? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Phil is a phenomenal guy and K for Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro. another yes. huge mountain, another big task, much like owning a home. The Phil uh, can metaphorically help you climb. That is the man. pkmortgages.com.au. Link is in the show notes. Thank you, Phil. Gabe, happy birthday. Oh, that was a couple months ago. Not you, silly. <laughs> Fluid. It's Soulcat Design's first birthday. Uh, they are turning one. Happy birthday, Soulcat. Happy birthday. Good friend of the show, partner of the show. They, they've been in business. They pretty much kicked off exactly when this show kicked off. That's fact. Thereabouts. So uh, we are as old as Soulcat are. So, I mean, happy birthday us too, but this isn't about us right now. This is about Soulcat Designs and their first birthday. And to celebrate, they're having a sale. You can head on over to their website. They're having a big sale all over their website on all their stainless steel water bottles. Yep. What else do they do, Gabe? They've got nice little whiskey glasses. Gorgeous little fucking coffee keep cups, which I suck. Mate, I've, I know I say, I've been poleaxing this thing. <laughs> I fucking froth it, eh? You get over to Queen too, I could say. Ah, uh, yeah, good. I gurney it once a week to get the fucking cum and fucking cement off it. That's how sturdy they are. Awful they can handle my jizz and cement. That's uh, a sturdy fucking cup. But yeah, Soul Cutter won and to celebrate they're having a sale on all their good shit that they sell on their website. You can go to the link in the show notes to see soulcatdesigns.com.au uh, and you can also still use our discount code Daily. Blue. Capital yeah. what? D. Capital what? B. All one word. Soulcatdesigns.com.au. Happy birthday, legends. We love you. Love you, Soulcat. I was scrolling. You know how drug dealers always say you should never get high on your own supply? I have heard the phrase. Well, I was scrolling my Instagram feed the other day and a video came up of Marco, the guy that owns Papa mm-hmm. Macros. Hair net, beard net. Well, that wasn't Marco. That was a fucking bodybuilder. But Marco was sitting next to the bodybuilder. Uh, he also, Marco's in good nick. He has been getting high on his own supply. He has been eating puff macros. Has to have been, mate. He's, yeah, he looks jacked. jacked. He looks fucking jacked. <laughs> you can tell he's putting in the external work besides the feed as well because you and I quite, aren't quite as jacked, no. but the food is definitely helping him get there. No, the main appeal for me is the fucking... Beep, beep. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. beep. <laughs> Guys, go get your puff macros. You can use our code... Daily Blue, capital D, capital B. All one word, link is in the show notes. Puff Macro's great supporter of the show and of our physiques. And, and you know, everyone's physique. <laughs> Love you, Puff Macro's. All right, tipping time. Time for the footy tips. Uh, round 18 last week, I got a measly one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I went all right. I only got two games wrong. I got seven and I fucking only missed the Cowboys' manly game. And oh, that was one point. point. Fucking spewing. That was such a good round for me and I got fucked. Spewing. Uh, in top spot, Kiz won on 94. He's joked up. Elliot won, still got the joker on 90. Very, very impressive stuff. I'm languishing in uh, about 83. I'm, I'm well off the pace. Well, well off the pace. Yeah, I'm down. I'm at 90. Yeah, very good. A couple of people tipped the card last week. Horny stuff. That pisses me off. I should have tipped it. Uh, this week, tonight's game, Dolphins Rabbits. Ooh. By the time you guys have heard this, Rabbitohs have already won. I'm tipping the Finns. I'm going against <laughs> all – every because only because Trail Bar's out. And Cam Murray. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going the Finns against against everything I stand for. I'm going to tip the Finns. That's fucking actually bullshit from you guys. 
Oh, well, it's only because it's your bunnies too. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. You never tip them. Uh, sharkies, tigers, uh, probably sharks. I've gone sharks, but I've heard some conversation that like tigers probably aren't the worst bet uh, tip there. Yeah, it could be a bit of an upset there. But I'll go sharks. Titans, eels, Parramatta suck. It's official. Parramatta are a bad football mm-hmm. team and their best players are playing Origin. Yep. you got to go to the Titans. And Titans are actually on the up. Titans are going good. Yeah, yeah. I've tipped Titans. So, I mean, they've still got for feeder because for some fucking reason, he's still not in the Queensland And team. I bet he's filthy and I bet he goes ape shit. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be so dirty that he didn't get picked. He's going to go ballistic. Uh, Brisbane and the Dragons. That's a fucking – I mean, Dragons are missing, obviously, Ben Hunt, um, Lomax. Zach Lomax. Brisbane are going to be missing a host of stars. Fuck, I don't know about that one, eh? I've gone Brizzy. Yeah, I I've gone. you have to. I've gone Brizzy too, but yeah, Ben, ben Hunt's pretty No, fucking, Ben Hunt. He's only thinking giving them cunts a fucking chance. Yeah, he's pretty important to that footy team. And Manly Knights, I've tipped Manly. Yeah. Um, I think Turbo's back. He's going to find his feet. He was pretty quiet last week. That was Extremely. his first game back. I think he's going to fucking – I think he's going to go berserk soon. Show uh, us. I think against a – um, Knights who are undermanned again. No KP, no Brady Best. Yeah. Uh, I think man, they will take Gagai. that at four points. And Gagai Gags, too. Yeah. 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 And the state of origin coming up Wednesday. I'm tipping the blues. Yeah, I'll tip the blues, eh? Yeah, if you've got to tip the I reckon they're gonna blues, do it. Baby. I reckon I you, actually baby. I I I fair think they're gonna I don't know. I've, I like it's, it's gonna be scary nuts. to say, but yeah. It's scary to say it, but mm-hmm. I I just got I don't know. They've I think got it's a, happening, bro. Well, I don't know. And, like, I don't know. It's just that hard thing of, like, is are they rattled? Like, you don't know if they're rattled or not, if it's just a Queensland, like, putting on a show. But I was like, I don't know. They might be rattled, eh? Queensland? Yeah. They're rattled as fuck, bro. I don't know. But then they do this thing where they're Mate, like, oh, we've, we're we've rattled. actually won Origin already. Like, game one, if everyone stays on the field, we were the better team no, again. No, It's fucking. Like, it's 2-0, bro. I just hate that, like, Queensland might put this thing on and then even if they are rattled and they win, they'll be like, ah, we got yous again. It's like, no, yous were rattled. Yeah. Like, even they might do this thing where it's like, They'll be fucking rattled right now. Slater's shitting himself. They're not doing the media thing. And then they might fluke a win or it might be a really close game and they might jag it. And they'll be like, ha ha, Queenslanders again. It's mm-hmm. like, no, yous were rattled and you got lucky, which I don't know. We'll see. But I've I just got a feeling we're going to do it. If Queensland win, it's tainted as fuck. Mm. Like that first game is so tainted. Uh, really heartbreakingly, terrible news over the weekend. Latrell was out. Trell out's massive. That fucking sucks. Trell out's massive. So who's gone to- Ratty. Burden? Bram and Best. Oh, Brady. Yeah, that's, I thought you said Maddie. Yeah, yeah, Brady. Yeah, I mean, he fucking crushed it. Last year. Last game three. year. Yeah, and he's playing really good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's not Luttrell, but fucking, yeah. He's it's, not. It's gonna be but who is? Yeah. I think I'll stay up for game three. Yeah, you mate. I'll, if you don't, yeah. that's fucking the head. Like, well, I'll say that. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm very sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sleepy. This is an important game. It's very important. It's very important, and I think we can do it. It gets me – I get nervous at the start of every Origin, bro. Like, it doesn't get me till the game's on now, but once it's there, yeah. I'm fucking so amped and nervous. Nothing makes me feel like the way I feel like State of Origin. Yeah, it's very – it's very exhilarating. It is the pinnacle. I'm so excited, bro. Very exciting stuff. Year, man. It's coming on. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, guys. Time for the Daily Blues Choose as it is each and every week. Brought to you by our Sherpa, our home loan Sherpa, our little Malaysian mate, Phil from <laughs> – <laughs> our little brown Sherpa, Phil from PK Mortgages. Take it away, Gabo. This looks actually fucking hectic too. Wow. Hey guys, it's chew time again. We've gone something different, something that I haven't seen before. Pakistani fusion Ooh. at Desi, a place I can only assume named after current Gold Coast Titans, former Manly coach Desi Hasler. I'll be the first to admit I probably cooked the order a little bit here. Uh, Pakistani fusion, I might have gone something a bit more traditional like a shawarma or something cool they had on the menu. Double XL chicken burger. <laughs> Holy shit, this looks fucking wild. Two crispy chicken thigh fillets. Fresh as fuck too, piping hot. I like the way that Heaps of chook on this thing. Just like a classic southern fried chicken burger. Mm. Nothing particularly Pakistani about it, but that's probably my fault for ordering it. Chicken's beautiful, fresh, crispy as fuck. A little bit of heat to it, nothing crazy. Nice creamy dressing on it. It's just like a tangy mayo. A couple of nice slices of cheese. The bun's soft and gorgeous. Very, very good. I'm impressed. The double XL 
chicken burger from Desi Pakistani Fusion. 8.4. Fucking outstanding. Chew on. I'm off of late. It was very good. It was surprisingly good. I went there and uh, I didn't have high hopes because it was like, it was not the flashiest shop I've ever seen. It was the guy, there was one dude there and he wasn't real talkative. Uh, I was like, attempted a bit of small talk and uh, nothing. Didn't and uh, it. it was fucking good, eh? It was fucking very, very good. I was hoping to hear a bit more crunch from that meat because it looked nice and crunchy. Yeah, no, it was super crunchy. Yeah, you just it was hear super, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might have to get one of those little mics that you wear on your lapel. Yeah. Fucking crunch it up. Yeah. No, it was good. Because it did look like, yeah. No, it was, cri- it was very it crispy. crispy as fuck. But it wasn't, yeah, I fucked it up because it's like Pakistani fusion. They had all these cool like shawarmas and like- And yeah, that chicken burger. Actual, sounds fucking yummy. Yeah, actual Pakistani food. And I was like, I'll get the Southern fried chicken burger. <laughs> Never had one of them before. Fucking idiot. But anyway, no, it was very good. Desi, that's at the Oasis on uh, on Beaumont Street in Hamilton. Very, very good. Named after the great Des Hasler. Yes, I, I believe so. <laughs> Desi's part Pakistani himself, so very good. Uh, should we do some dial ins? Mm-hmm. Guys, you know what time it is. It's dial-in time. If you want to get in touch with Blue and I, give us a piece of your mind. Tell us what you love and tell us what you hate and give us a recommendation. Anything. You can get in touch with us via the speak pipe in our Instagram bios, Gabex Thomas. Daily Blue News, you follow the links, it'll say dial into Daily Blue Weekly, you press that, you follow the prompts and you send us a message. It's that simple. Nice, mate. Let's get into the first one. Welcome to the Daily Blue. Thought it was time for something new. Daily Blue's eyes get so red. What is on Gaby's head? This is where they blew up. <laughs> Gabe Dish on show it fixed up. You never knew he won without. Drake's a pedal, it's knock him out. <laughs> oh boys, geez here. No solos this week, but uh, a bit of an update on the score, I suppose. Gabe got the first one right, Bluey, for saving me. Mm. Uh um, I think you knew what it was, but you didn't say it. So uh, Gabe gets the point there. You two can argue whether you get a point or not. Uh, last week, Bluey, you got it wrong, mate. It was Sunday it was. last week. Come on, I, I wouldn't play the same one twice, you know. But I just thought I'd clear the air. The only reason I've mentioned that fella's sexuality last week is to explain oh. why this bloke was wearing a fuck, fuck ton of makeup. I really couldn't care less about his preference for sausage. I'm not a homophobe or a racist, you know. I'd like to treat everyone the same and just take the piss out of them regardless of what their fucking preferred pronouns are. But, yeah, anyway. Vegan. Hope you have a good one, boys. Gotcha. I swear I'm not. How good's ring it up to say you're not a homophobe? And for some reason also not racist. <laughs> no one said you were. No. Uh, to clarify, that, that a couple of these will be two weeks old because we did the episode with Hammer. Yeah, there's a few There's a few from the other week that we're catching up on. But, uh, geez, always good to hear from you, mate. And glad to hear you're not a homophobe or a racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a mate and he was, be like, he was like, um, oh, you know, I'm not like, uh, like racist to like about chicks or anything, like trying to say like sexist. Yeah. <laughs> he just couldn't figure out what the word was. Yeah, <laughs> racist towards chicks. I mean, that is, yeah. <laughs> Just towards the blokes. But whatever it is, I'm not it. <laughs> Boys, it's Gamo from the coast. Fucking how good are these fucking New South Wales blues going? They are dogs. Yep. I'm calling you at half time in the first game. Nice. That's how confident I am that we're going on to absolutely destroy these Queensland dogs to nil. Yep, the fucking blues. Let's go, lads. Bryce, that oh. Fucking, what do you reckon? 60 to nil? Fucking, fucking 70. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, lads, this discussion came up in the, earlier in the night. If, like, we played international rugby league, but instead of Australia in, like, the World Cup or fucking something like that, it's Qu- Queensland and New South Wales versus, like, Tonga and, yeah. like, New Zealand, Samoa and stuff. Watch him. I reckon that'd be better. What do you think? Anyway, up the fucking blues. How good's fucking top? Oh, getting me bets through. How good's low max? Getting me bets through, I think. <laughs> anyway, Come have on. a good one, lads. Come on. Come on, thinks the series started with like game two. He said it was game one. It was game two, mate. I thought he said game two. Oh, okay, I'm tripping then. My oh, bad. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's a couple of weeks old, but Camo fired up about very, what was it, an incredible first half of footy? Yeah. Uh, if Queensland, yeah. the Australian team washes everyone. 
Oh, the two – the Blues, yeah, you put them in different pools, the Blues and Queensland, they'd still end up in the final yeah. for sure, like easily. Australia could nearly field three teams at a World Cup. But actually, fuck, with that point in mind, like the Tongan and Islander boys who were in the like New South Wales and Queensland teams – yeah, like if, true. If, if they opt to play for their country or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can still pick some insane fucking teams. Yeah. Yeah, we, we dominate rugby league. I think so. On the global stage. Here we go. And I don't want the world to see me. Fucking love this song. Because I don't think that they'd understand. When everything's meant to be broken, I just want to love who I am. <laughs> what a song. Up the blues. You. <laughs> you know that's from? Nah. The fun. Was that the fun? Yeah. Fucking oath. That's We're, fucking good shit. That's the first time he's ever dialed in without his classic patented funk intro. Was he playing that piano? Yeah, I'd assume so. Yeah, fucking he's, he's talented, man. Bro, that song fucking is great to sing in the shower, I'll tell it, you that. It's a tearjerker. Fuck yeah. Yeah, if you're feeling sorry for yourself on a Sunday after a big session on the piss, get in the shower and fucking sing your heart out to that. Oh, fuck yeah. Euphoric shit. Anonymous. Got a YouTube rot or hack? You guys can decide. If you're a tight ass and don't want to pay for premium... Uh, when the ad starts, click on the little I button and then go stop seeing this ad, return to video and all the ads stop and you can go back to the video in peace. Roar on. Oh, that's oh, that's completely new information to me. I didn't know you could do that. Stop seeing this ad. Fuck, I'm, if that's true, I'm using that. I fucking hate YouTube ads so much. Thank you, Anonymous member. Yeah, use that one. I hope... That still works. That's fucking sick. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's play on. YouTube have got enough money <laughs> and enough of my time and attention. And that's, I, that's unreal. Yeah, I'm like I don't need to see that ad again. I don't need to see an ad for fucking Zyrtec or fucking, yeah. How's this? I mean, it's coming from someone who doesn't pay for the fucking um, pro, um, Amazon Prime account, but I do have access to it. It started giving me ads before shows on that. I'm like, well, someone's already fucking paying for this. Like, yeah, and it's giving me ads for like shows that are on Amazon. I'm like, I'm fucking. I've got I it. Picked, I'm on your service. Yeah, that was the whole thing with like subscription TV. Was like, there's no ads. Mm. Like, we get our revenue from you subscribing. We don't need to advertise. And now every single subscription service has ads on it. Yep. Like they realize they can just make a zillion bars. Yeah, no, they're like double dipping. They're fucking dickheads. Oh. It, oh, but why are you advertising your own service? I'm already using it. You dumb pricks. Corporate greed. That's in <laughs> case you're sitting with someone who doesn't have it. <laughs> I'll read out the name of on this one. It's I've had too many at this point. Well, so this will be good. This will be good. What's going on, boys? Pretty cool. Thought I'd dial in because I got a cheeky idea for some merch. Uh, there's this guy I used to watch on YouTube. He reviews burgers, and he actually released a shirt that had all the places he reviewed and the yeah. scores on the back. And then a uh, little wee design on the front. Thought it would be a cool idea for the Daily Blues Chews. It's only 50-odd episodes if you could uh, be fucked, you know, wrangling through all the scores and where they were from. With pretty pretty cool idea for a shirt. Don't, I'd fucking buy it. Don't mind that. Let us know what you boys think. Yo. Yeah, I don't mind that. I um, I watched that YouTuber, Mike Malak. Yeah, nice. Yeah, our merch guy was like, he's been hammering me about doing something shoes related. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I've watched that YouTube and I thought that would be a good idea, but I didn't think about stealing it. But also, it's not like we really have the same fucking audience either. Yeah, there's nothing original. I'm, I'm completely fine with fucking, I mean, cord caps, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, please. Yeah. That's awesome, mate. I appreciate that. I really don't mind that idea. Love it. I thought you were going to be way drunker with that name. Queensland! <laughs> Suck on that, you cane toad cocksuckers. <laughs> Yeah, the motherfucking boily. Yeah, the boily. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. I met the boily. I remember, yeah, you told yeah, us. You told us yeah. yeah. And he introduced himself as the motherfucking boily. Yeah. What a mad cunt. I met a young fella on site uh, yesterday who listened to the pod and uh, then every time I walked past where he was working, they were cranking Nickelback. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but I was like, 
say good day to him, and then I walked past him like ten times, and they were just pumping Nickelback every time I walked past. I was frothing it. I was like, "Fuck it yeah!" It was cutting off like mid song just to put saving. I don't on know. Again. I don't know if they were doing it on purpose or not, but it, fuck, I loved it so much. It was sick. <laughs> well, it's like an entrance song. Fuck every yeah. time you walk by, I don't know. Or they might have just had it cranking, and I was just it was just when I walked past, but I was fucking frothing it. Nah, fuck it. They put it on for you. They mate. were pulverizing it. With blue on whiskey and gay on wine, getting you with tipsy in the neon light. Uh, you just um, you reminded me of a funny little story. You were talking about the teachers rooting kids at the school. My story's slightly <laughs> different. Um, but there was this rumour going around. There was these two teachers that were married separately, like, to their own partners. And there was a rumour going around that they were rooting each other, like, going off. Because they'd always go off together on, like, um, lunch breaks, all that kind of shit, blah, blah, blah. Anyway... So I'm in uh, a class with the female teacher, and she's like, oh, I can't seem to find my pencil case, guys. I was like, oh, did you look in Mr. Galley's car? This is the male teacher. And she just fucking, like, just stops. She starts, like, bawling. She's like, go to the principal's office. Caught it. Now! And she's, like, screaming. She's fucking crying. So I reckon there was a bit of heat to that fucking rumor. You know, that sort of worked up about it. And, uh, yeah, I flew pretty close to the sun with that one. They fucking almost <laughs> expelled me for that one. So, yeah, anyway, fucking, uh, fucking just get into it. Good shit, On GT. Yours. Golden tonsils. Great, uh, great pipes open the dial in there. Yeah, I mean, obviously she broke down and started crying then. She definitely was rooting him. Yeah, she's like, oh, students know that I'm cheating on my husband. That would be upsetting. I would start crying and send you to the principal's office if I was cheating on my husband too. Uh, teachers got together at my school. I don't know if they were previously in relationships or something, but like it was a similar rumor for sure Yeah, when I was at school. Uh, mate, if you were a teacher, I thought about this the other day, like of course you're going to end up with another teacher. Yeah. No one can relate to your, like, stress and experience. Like, coming home from work and, like, that's such a nice experience having been whinging about kids who are fucking peppering you all day. Same holidays. Yeah, you need to relate, I reckon. Yeah. It's something like that. And, yeah, having holiday time together, fucking nice. It's some crazy stat of, like, however many affairs start at the workplace. Yeah. yeah. I'd be, yeah, for sure. I'd fucking start rooting other scaffolds. <laughs> <laughs> Bricklayers. <laughs> Mate, if there was a chick scaffolder, I wouldn't dust a cup of the temple bar. It's rude. <laughs> Boys, it's the Vaucluse wanker. Yes. Louie, I'd just like to give you four tips on running. Um, train your calves so you don't get Achilles tendonitis. Train your shins so you don't get shin splints. Train your glutes so you don't get IT band syndrome or runner's knee because your glutes is the main component in running. And the fourth tip is don't increase your overall weekly load by 10%. So if you run 20 kilometers in one week, don't run 30 the next. Nah. Run no more than 22 kilometers. Yeah. Hope that helps. Respect. Yeah. Thank you, the wanker. I love the Vaucluse wanker. <laughs> keeps you motivated. I was accountable. Keeps you honest. Let's you, lets you know he's better than you. I love it. Hey, anyone else picking up a, a running journey? Take note of those ones. Beautiful. And there is no risk of me increasing it by more than fucking 5%, let alone 10. Hello, Gabe. I'm going to give you both the um, benefit of the doubt here and say you're both not 80s children. Well, no. I know Gabe's not. I thought, Blue, you might be borderline, but <laughs> just look at given your shocking lack of knowledge of the Perth Piss Rex amazing rendition of yeah. uh, Holy Diver by Dio, um, you've both got some musical fucking homework to do and... I dare say there's even banging cover of Kill Switch Engage did like 10 years ago. Fuck, boys. Brush up on your knowledge. Copy Fuck, that. Make my dinner here. Signing out. He's a fucking hurt me. <laughs> fucking 90s kids. They yeah. weren't happy with that, were they? That's fair enough. I, I would feel the same if like uh, someone did a Nickelback cover and you were like, oh, who was that? Like It's the same. I assume it's the same kind of. Same kind of hurt. That's completely fair. I'll, t- I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. I'll wear that. Especially when a song is so near and dear for your generation. Yeah. Here and like, they probably just feel hurt. They probably feel old, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I do also appreciate you thought I was born in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, One I of look the great back end is holy oh, fuck. Not even a back end. It's just sledge. I'll wear that too. That's fine. I do look <laughs> weathered. That's completely fine. And yes, I am a 90s kid just. G'day, boys. It's motherfucking Yowie here, back again. Yeah, the Yowie. Um, I just wanted to admit that it was me last episode that shat and then farted. <laughs> um, it was definitely real. I was at yeah. work. It was about 10 in the morning. 
and I did it right next to my coworker, and he's like, why the fuck have you got your phone so close to your asshole? <laughs> and then I ripped a fart, and we both couldn't believe it was real, and I'm just so fucking glad that I captured that. Yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Peace out. Bro, I can honestly say we did. Clearly we did. That was our, probably our favourite dial-in that episode. That could have been dial-in of the week, you farting into your phone. <laughs> Nay the year. Uh, yeah, that was fucking funny. I like to think that maybe it wasn't even him and he just saw us like it so much that he just wanted some cred. Yeah, claiming someone else's fart. Claiming someone else's <laughs> bodily functions. <laughs> not bad. Not a bad tactic. G'day, guys. Lucky here. Um, cheer, cheer the red and the white. Honour the name by day and by night. Lift that noble banner high. Shake down the thunder from the sky. Although the odds be great or small, swans will come in and win over all. While their loyal swans are marching onward to victory. Up the fucking swannies! Up the swannies. <laughs> loyal swansmen now. Beautiful. Yeah, official, official AFL team of the show. <laughs> Damn, I did not expect so much steam to get behind that. But the AFL fans come out to play. Huge respect. Up the Swannies. Boys, motherfucking Boily here. Um, just something I've got to fucking get off my chest. I just watched the replay of that Knights para game last night. And fuck me, I just got to share one of my favourite things in footy. When that when that McDonald Jones Stadium's a full house like it was, mm. and you get Blokes like Best scoring length of the field tries. When he picks those fucking balls up, how the crowd just gets on their feet in unison and fucking cheers their guts out, that's dead set one of my favourite things in the whole fucking in, in the footy world, eh? Like, if that don't make the hair stand up in the back of your neck and get your fucking heart pumping, well, you need to go see your fucking heart surgeon. Fuck you yeah. fucking don't have one. <laughs> fucking ass. Anyway, um, also, the amount of pussy that fucking Best... <laughs> must fucking get slapped in the face with what like, when he plays like that when he goes out after the game. Yeah. Like fuck me, you wouldn't have pockets deep enough to collect it and it's fucking hitting you. Yeah. Anyway, uh have a good weekend, boys. Cheers. Yeah, the boily. Yeah, fucking oath. We uh I was lucky enough to beat that Canberra game, that semi final last year. And uh, Dom Young scored those tries. It's fucking it's nuts. Footy rules, live sport rules. It's skits and knew he always turns up, mate. Yeah, knew he's fucking crazy, <laughs> crazy supporter base. Uh, and, yeah, I assume all those professional athletes are just what, fucking for Australia. Brady Best wiped up now. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, it's like some fucking Xboxes kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, nice respect. Fanny? Oh, no, not for anyway. I couldn't tell you. But, yeah, yeah no, nah, huge respect to the, all the footballers rooting. Get yeah, ballsy getting with, like, an Xboxes daughter. Yeah. But, I mean, Brad Best, fuck. I'm he sure can he can hold his He own. can handle himself. Uh, boys, boys, boys. Look, I can't say I'm not disappointed you chose the Swannies, but <laughs> deep down I knew that's the way you were always going to go. But enough footy talk from me. I'd just like to shout out that legend Perth Piss Rack for his absolutely delicious cover of Holy <laughs> Diver last week. That was fucking fantastic. It's almost as delicious as the Papa Macros I got in the mail. Hey. That can be your new fucking promo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, um, uh, Kill Switch Engage Blue, they did a cover of that song as we, <laughs> that was mentioned on the newsroom. And they're also coming to Australia in September. They're Ooh. supporting Iron Maiden. And I'll be seeing them there, but I'll also be seeing them at the sideshow. And if you didn't know, they're doing a sideshow in Newey as well. So if you haven't got tickets for that, fucking get on it, mate. I didn't know that. I'll tell you what, you won't be disappointed. All right, sauce out. Have a good one, boys. Yeah, the sauce. I did not know they were coming to Newcastle. They're a fucking very, very big band. There's fucking Newcastle's getting some fucking big acts lately. So big metal acts. So too. that's a band you know, is it? Yeah, they're, they're huge. They were like me. Oh, like they've been big for a long time, but like. When uh, like everyone kind of my age was going through, when emo and heavy music was kind of first, oh. not first, but like um, everyone, there was kind of a renaissance there, like bands like Census Fail and like, yeah, they, they were fucking heavy hitters, like big time. Yeah, true. And it's kind of, it's like we're saying about cycles, like all that stuff's coming back now. Like it's big time coming back. So that's fucking hectic to come to Newey. And yeah, it's very funny seeing how many people are annoyed at us for not knowing the Holy Diver cover. <laughs> yeah. And to be honest, I still didn't even listen to it after you posted it in there. I'm going to have to go and fucking listen to it. Uh, I know we normally save going into the newsroom for Patreon, but did you see fucking BFFG's photo in there? 
When he was dressed when, up as a young fella. When he was punk? Yeah, that was hectic. Fuck me. Fattest shoes I've ever seen. I haven't seen shoes that fat. He was like a mix of Travis Barker and Billy Joel from Green Day. He <sighs> looked fucking wild. Great yeah, get up. Yeah, shout out BWFG. That shit was fucked. Hectic. Great get up. This will be good. Oh, g'day, fellas. Philip PK Mortgages here. Hey. Um, noticing a lot of AFL fans dialing in lately. Not my game of choice. However... We've got a share in four tickets to all the games at Marvel Stadium in the MCG. Hey. Uh, clients come first, obviously, but they often go to waste. So if anyone wants to go, flick the page a message, and if they're free, I'll get them over to you. Oh. Keep up the good work, fellas. Cheers. That's And that is why we align ourselves with people like Phil from PK Mortgages because yep. he's a fucking man. He's the man. And, uh, yeah, if anyone's keen on those tickets to Marvel Stadium, I will put you in contact with Phil. PK underscore mortgages on Instagram. Yeah, fucking the man. Fucking Philly. The what man. doesn't he do? He's the king. He's the king. That's so good. Yeah, AFL fans get around it. And him. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Shane. No, oh, he's definitely feeling a lot older than what he actually is. He's Happy birthday to me. Happy Beep. birthday, Shane. Hooray! Sorry, boys. I am fucked. <laughs> but I'm going to get up bright and early and try this fucking you jogging can't. while hungover bullshit. I don't know how it's going to go, but I shall keep you posted, boys. You're a dickhead for doing Love this. Love you. Yes, I know. Uh, yeah, good on you if you went for a run. Well, he's got a part two. Oh, here we go. There's no way he went for a run. <laughs> oh, let's hear it. Good morning, you sexy humans. Shana here. Uh, giving you an update from my hangover jog this morning. Oh. Um, not good. <laughs> not good, boys. Um, I made it precisely... 2.15 kilometres into it. That's all right. Before I went the big vom in some <laughs> random person's front yard and walked home with my tail between my legs. Yeah. Um, wasn't pleasant. Wasn't pleasant, boys. Uh, each to their own, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's uh, it's fucked, boys. It's fucked. Anyway, that's it. Love you. Nice, Shane. Great, you, great effort even going, mate. Even getting two Ks out in a chunder. That's that's impressive. Happy birthday for last week, Shane. Happy birthday, Shane and Soul Cap. I, I, <laughs> I can't believe he fucking did that. Episode 47. Um, toad in the hole is fucking Yorkshire pudding with sausages in it. Mm. Um, mm. Fucking... Not bread with a fucking egg in it. It's Pop a, used to make that egg in the bread fucking all the time. Egg Just sort of tore you up on that. Mate. Not correct. Egg in the bread. Yeah, no, that's correct. I, I think. We, I said it was French toast and you said, no, it's toad in the hole. Yeah, toad in the hole. Yeah, and he's right. Tradition, I think, yeah. Toad in the hole is Yorkshire pudding. What do you say with egg and sausage? So yeah. what is it when you cut a hole in the egg and fucking, is that just eggy bread? He just said egg in a bread. Eggy bread. I mean, I mean, it does sound all right, doesn't it? Toad in a hole does, it's like, that visually, is, yeah, that, that fits. There's a hole with something in it, so. Cock in a hole. It makes sense. Comes out of a chalk. Yeah, bum rock in a hole. <laughs> G'day, boys. It's the Red Rocket coming at you dusty and direct <laughs> from a Monday morning, hot <laughs> off the press of a Sunday sauce up. Good that's effort. really regretting my life choices as of, in the last 12 hours. <laughs> But that's not what I'm here for today. Uh, I'll cut to the chase. What is the most loose and fucking insane thing you've ever seen a punter dabble in when it comes to spending on the work card? I won't go into names or anything like that, but um, the other half, um, the mob that she works at is one bloke who um, he got the Don't Come Monday and um, it was all hush-hush around it. They wonder what the fuck's going on. This was a good fortnight that um, all the shadiness was going on. This mad bastard went and got the fucking vasectomy and put it on the company card what? thinking that he'd slip that one through. Oh, my God. And after God. they go through and um, check all the fucking 
expanses than that, my goodness, did he participate in some absolute rotting of the system? Wow! But, oh, I kind of respect the, um, the like the front that he's got for doing that, but also that's absolutely out of control. <laughs> yeah, wild. Rightio, boys, stay over Monday and stay dusty. Huge respect from the Red Rocket. Call up busted on a Monday. Fuck yeah. Maybe it's a pie mechanic. <laughs> yeah, could have been the pie mechanic getting vasectomies on the work card. That's fucking, excuse the pun, that's nuts. Um, wow. That's ballsy. Oh, <laughs> can't there stop. we go. Can't stop. Uh, that's crazy. I, yeah, I can't even think of anything that loose. I, I know. How, how do you hide that in there? Like, do you say, well, you know, it's good for it's good for work if I don't have any more kids? No, we just obviously had the had the company card and thought he could get away with it. I yeah. don't think he was ever going to try and fucking explain it. I think he just thought he could do it and not get caught. I'll never check this. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Well, yeah, like you said, fucking ballsy play. I do not have them kind of fucking gahanas, eh? I'm such a pussy. I think I'm going to get caught for everything. Yeah, it's been something like a, he's obviously been rotten for a while and he's like, they'll never catch me. I'm getting this. I'm fucking pay, work's paying for this one. I'm getting a vasectomy on the work card. Yeah, I, I can't even think of anything that comes close to that. I've seen blokes rack up crazy fucking drinks tabs um, and just, you know, they tell you, I oh, will just get beers and then next inning it's espresso martinis and stuff. And it's a work lunch. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a meeting. Yeah, but I've never, I haven't seen that shit. No yeah, way. Nothing, nothing like a vasectomy. Fuck, no. that's awesome. Very good. No, nah, I'll, I'll try and come back to you on that. I can't think of anything that even comes close to that. Yeah, I got nothing. I can only think of one time when I was working at this fence factory. It's not even funny. It was just mad. They like last day of work. They got to see this fucking sick feed with like ribs and steak and everything. That's better than a vasectomy. It's fucking heaps better than a yeah, vasectomy, but not as loose. Then they didn't do it the next year, and I was like heaps disappointed. Yeah, that's a problem. The bar's been set. Yeah, I demand ribs. Oh, sucking fucking sucked. You absolute <laughs> <laughs> Was that real? I th- it sounded weird. We'll run it back, but it sounds like someone's farted and their missus has sprayed That's exactly what it sounds like. You absolute fucking pig. Sounds, sounds like she's crying. You absolute fucking pig? Yeah. Maybe. Great stuff. <laughs> or fart into a domestic. That's beautiful. I thought I just Patreon. My bad. That's all right. <laughs> I, I actually didn't even read that it said Patreon. We'll, we'll leave that there. And bring it in now. <laughs> <laughs> that dial in was for Patreon. <laughs> if you want to hear that, guys, go to the show notes below. Join the oh, Patreon. Oh, fuck. That was uh, a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yarn on last week's episode. A couple of good yarns on last week's episode. Whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's all. Gay Blue. He's going dumb, cunt, calling back in. DC. Dumb, mate. Got a bit of a play on or carry on. I know that's the Alpha Blokes thing, but fucking good luck trying to get a yarn onto one of their episodes. Fuck you, quit. I know you listen, except me yarns. <laughs> um, so I was at the gym the other day and going to the change rooms to get changed. And I mean, there's a bloke in there. He's met up in the shower. He's got nothing on, which is fair enough. He goes into the shower, turns it on, and it's got little shower curtains, and he just doesn't close the shower curtain. Like, if they had none, that wouldn't look... <laughs> Being nude isn't the thing that bothers me or has me perplexed. Like, starting as I was in Japan, I was naked, naked bathing with a bunch of 80-year-old Japanese dudes. I'm fine with that. It's just the fact that there was cow sh- shower curtains, <laughs> cow and shirts. he just decided, I'm not going to close it. <laughs> Like, it's an MMA gym, and it's not like he's one of the boys who fight with her. It's not like he's a footy team where, like, he got a bit of morale. He's just a bloke at the gym in the shower. I walk into the change room, then he hops in the shower, leaves, curtain open. So I don't know whether you think, fucking, I'm overreacting a bit, or whether we fucking just close the thing, and then we've got no dramas. Anyway, love you, boys. Bye. Did he say it was an MMA gym or it was not? I think he said it was an MMA gym. Well, I just think that's an alpha tactic. Uh, I think he's just trying to big dog everyone. He's like, I know there's a curtain. You're going to look at my cock. Yeah, th- that bloke has a hog. He's got a. Well, well, yeah. Or just one of the great fucking confidence of all time. Yeah, he just maybe he just wants, he's just looking for a yarn while he showers and obviously the curtain feels rude. So he's like, if anyone wants to have a chat while I'm having a rinse, I'm here. I just think that's alpha behavior. I am. 
<laughs> no, that's a carry on for I, sure. I, I do feel bittersweet about that dial in DC. Uh, I love you, mate, but uh, just coming to us as second option because you can't get a run on alpha blokes. But I do respect the persistence to you calling out Quino. Yeah, because you know Quino listens. Because Quino listens. All right, mate, I'm happy to play second fiddle to the alpha blokes. And if you can't get it, I mean, that's pretty. That could be a fucking like catchphrase. If you can't get into the alpha blokes, come and listen to us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, if, the, if the alpha bike is too big for you, come fucking have a listen to the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> little old DB Dub. Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, I'm going to say play on. I admire this guy's confidence and him not giving a fuck. Yeah, I think it's a I think bit that's of, awesome. It's a bit of column A, it's a bit of column B. It is definitely carry on, but it's also I like the fucking arrogance to be like, I know there's a curtain. You're going to look at my piece. Yeah, and like. How, you, you, you're going to have a glance and like you're going to call them out for having a glance. Well, shut the curtain then, you dumb cunt. Mm. Uh, final dial-in of the show. Boys, it's the doppelganger. Yes. Hey. We've got a conundrum for you. Do you celebrate your 100th episode with like an event or do you celebrate your 104th, which would be two years? Ooh. And on the back of that, I've had an idea. Do What do you think about having a charity golf day for your event, uh, whether it be, you know, like two men or four men, Ambrose sort of things, picked out of a hat for whoever buys the ticket or whatever. So, you know, whether it be a hundred bucks per person sort of thing and uh, obviously cover the green fees and all that sort of shit. Everyone buys their own piss and all that sort of stuff. And you do a charity event for Daily Blue and uh, you donate whatever the, the profit and whatever the money it doesn't cost to, to host it to your favourite charity sort of thing. Obviously, fly down to Newcastle, you know, book out uh, bloody 20 carts or whatever, 10 teams of four takes, and then have a hit of golf, get on the piss, meet a few more of the locals. Obviously, I'd like to attend, uh, whether it be the 100th or 104th, <laughs> just like the uh, the one year. But, yeah, let me know what you think of that anyway. Fucking oath. Doppelganger, you need to, uh, yeah, do some. You need to be on our events team. That's a fucking sick idea. I, I'm not a golf guy. I don't. I've never. I've never been into golf, but I love like golf days and piss ups. I'd it's, just be. I'd just be driving a cart and drinking. If that if that was to ever happen, I wouldn't be swinging a club probably once. But I'd probably just get on the sauce and fucking have a great day. I do like the idea of doing a charity thing, um, using our power for a bit of philanthropy and doing something good like that. I think that's a fucking sick idea. Great word. Uh, yeah, whether it's a golf day or like a long lunch somewhere, or we did have a good one. I might keep it a secret in case we do it because I would like it to be a surprise. But we did have like There's a really a, good idea flying around. We, had, we, we did have a really good idea for this year's one, but we thought it might better suit the 100th because yeah. it is kind of a bit of a bigger show. But yeah, I think 100th episode or whether it's the two year one. I think it's much of a muchness. I think hundreds, obviously, the big number you look to celebrate with a live show. But two years, nothing to sneeze at either. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I fucking love that idea. I, I, like the live show that we did was so much fun. It was so sick. And it's cool. Like everyone comes and gets to meet each other and we all get to get on the piss. I think it's the most fun thing in the world that we get to do stuff like that. Yep. I, I, so, yeah, the more the more often we could do that, it would be cool to get to 100 quicker so we could do it again sooner. But I think that also you only do it once a year or so. We'll probably we might do something at Christmas time. We might go for a long lunch at Christmas time, maybe have a Christmas party. But, um, yeah, no, it's fucking like, – the more of that stuff we can do with you legends, the better because it's fucking uh, – it's what it's about at the end of the day. I, I agree. I think events are fun. I think a golf day would be fucking fun if it was nice and sunny. Yep. Um, but there's a lot of planning and logistics, logistics that would going to go into that. Yeah, but you could do but it. like, you can manage it. It's you could just, do it easy. It's do just you... a little bit. It's just an extra job. Yeah. But, but, like, you know, you can manage that. Yeah. But, no, I, I fucking love that idea, mate. I think that's a fucking sick idea. We do have it. There's a couple of – I mean, if you guys ever got fucking fun ideas for shit like that, because, like I said, we, we're still complete novices at this stuff, and I know, like, Delta Bravo reached out and gave us some really sick ideas for the live show, and we're, we're fully open to fucking all ideas because we are, like, dumb. Yeah, yeah. We 100%. are dumb and new at this, so ever got any cool ideas like that, always flick them through because we're, uh, we're all for it. But, yeah, it sounds fucking sick. I also think that – and this is just toying with an idea. I know the uh, Flog Cabin podcast, they've done a couple of live shows and they don't record them. Okay. And, like, you can tell our audio and that, like, it was pretty shit, like, when we actually put out put out the live show. So yeah. you can just have a, an experience for the people that rock up. Yeah, you could just do the live and show. it saves us worrying about more shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, you just have a live podcast yeah. and then it's just an event and it doesn't get recorded. That's an option too. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. And then you can roll that into a piss up somewhere. Yeah. 
There's always a piss up attached to it. That's, <laughs> man, that's, that's, that's it's not a blue weekly baby. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's a fucking sick idea. The more, the more. I mean, and as we sort of learn and get sort of better at it, and the whole thing grows, we'll just do more and more fun shit. That's that's the whole point. Mm-hmm. Fucking nice. Uh, that that was the last island, guys. So again, thank you always for tuning in, and listening. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, like we said, cool caps are on sale too. Thank you very very much, everyone that's got one. They're dwindling. I think they're about fucking half sold already. Yeah, and it's, they are. And it's Thursday, Arvo, and they went on sale this morning. So, um, yeah, if you would like to get one, it's the last time you'll be able to get one of these colours and then they're gone fucking for good. So thank you very much, everyone that's already bought one. Uh, if you got one on Patreon early or this week, they're going out at the very start of next week. Um, yeah, they should be with you hopefully by the end of next week. Yep, going to box them up and get them out there. And think of these as fucking memorabilia, guys. Like you said, you want to let people know that you are with us from the jump. You, you want to get your hand on this sucker. It's a bit of history. It's fucking Daily Blue history, That's not baby. overselling it. This is history that you're buying. In the fucking making. <laughs> Immortality. People, people will be jealous of these hats one day. I'm telling you that for sure. When we're all old geriatrics shitting our pants and you've got one of these on covered in, like I said, semen and blood and poop. You You'll be, be able to say I was there from the jump. <laughs> and it will be getting you grandma pussy guaranteed or grandpa cock, whatever yeah. your um, you'll desire be, is. You'll, You'll be rooting in the nursing home wearing one of these for sure. Uh, rate the podcast five stars, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, follow it, subscribe, all that good shit. And there's an extra episode on Patreon on Wednesdays if you're that way inclined. See you then. See you. You're my boy, Blue!